it's me again. A couple weeks ago, I reviewed Juliette Benita Coleman's biography of her father, Ronald Coleman. But unlike in my reviews of Joseph Cotton's autobiography and Dwight Fry's biography, I didn't actually talk about the movies themselves. I wanted to, though, and when there was some interest expressed, that was all the encouragement I needed. And as February 9th is Ronald Coleman's birthday, and his 125th birthday no less, this seems like the perfect opportunity to celebrate his work. On his IMDb page, there are 62 credits listed. That includes 5 TV shows, 1 short, 29 silent films, and 27 sound films. Of all of those, I have seen 11 films and 2 halves. <laughs> I'm going to focus on the 5 that I love the most, and then talk briefly about the rest afterward. A Tale of Two Cities, 1935. I have to start with the first movie I saw him in, in which he plays one of my favorite characters, Sidney Carton. I remember feeling wary about seeing it because I knew if the character wasn't played right and didn't live up to my expectations, I wouldn't be happy. But little did I know that Coleman so badly wanted to play this role and was so devoted to doing it right that he even shaved off his trademark mustache for it. Now I can't think of any other actor of his time who could have done this part better justice. I consider the character he plays of Sidney Carton to be the poster child for unrequited love. His drinking problem keeps him from rising above his potential and strips him of all professional or personal ambitions. Still, he falls in love with Lucy Manette, who inconceivably chooses Carton's boring doppelganger over him, but keeps Carton very generously but firmly in the friend zone, where he secretly grieves over the possibilities of what might have been. Ultimately, when the courses of their lives tragically intersect with the French Revolution, Sidney gets the chance to redeem himself by sacrificing his life in her husband's place and uttering some of the most famous last words in literary history. It's a far, far better thing I do than I have ever done. It's a far, far better rest I go to than I have ever known. In true Dickens fashion, there are several memorable supporting characters, but it is Coleman's scenes that really shine, and A Tale of Two Cities must be a staple of any Ronald Coleman collection. Random Harvest, 1942. In this romance, Coleman plays a World War I veteran suffering with amnesia. Amid the confusion of armistice festivities, he escapes from the sanitarium where he's being treated and runs into Greer Garson in the street. She is bright and vivacious, but also caring, gentle, and nurturing. She takes him under her wing, rescuing him in more ways than one. They fall in love and begin a new, happy, married life together. But then an accident causes him to regain his old memories and lose his new ones. How the story unfolds from there is both heartbreaking and beautiful. This movie has one of my favorite concluding scenes, and it showcases the subtlety of Coleman's acting style. I'm always attracted to those moments in the movies when a character suddenly realizes something and you can see the various emotions play across his face. Coleman was particularly good at this. It's a wonderful scene that I can watch over and over again with pleasure, and I definitely cried the last time I saw it. The Prisoner of Zenda, 1937. Coleman plays dual roles here, something that was rather his forte, an irresponsible king on the eve of his coronation and a hitherto unknown distant relation who happens to be vacationing in the country. When the king's envious half-brother tries to sabotage the coronation, the distant relation is forced to take the king's place, but when the impersonation must continue for more than a day, personal feelings get involved and things grow complicated. This story is very like a fairy tale, with the hero, the beautiful princess, the evil villain and his henchmen, the damsel in distress, Romance and humor, adventure and treachery work together to make the movie a fun romp with lots of swash swash buckle buckle. As in most of his roles, Coleman plays with a light, comic touch that sparkles. But he does not fumble the film's crucial serious scenes either. A dependable actor, you can always count on him to bring class and humor and depth to any film. Lost Horizon, 1937 most Ronald Coleman enthusiasts know that the character of Robert Conway, more than any other in his career, had the most in common with Coleman himself, even in his own opinion. 
Conway is a diplomat sent to evacuate a group of people out of China before the outbreak of revolution. En route, the plane goes down in the snowy Himalayas. There, the survivors are met by a group of men who lead them on a difficult path through the mountains to a place in a hidden valley called Shangri-La. In this utopian community, the travelers find peace, youth, and romance. Unfortunately, not everyone can escape conflict. The cast as a whole is delightful, including Thomas Mitchell, one of my favorite character actors, and Jane Wyatt, who has some adorable scenes with Coleman. But Coleman as Conway is every bit the hero of the show, making difficult decisions for the good of those he feels responsible for, even if it means potentially denying himself of love and happiness and a newfound dream. The Talk of the Town, 1942 I don't usually hear this movie mentioned in discussions of Ronald Coleman's best movies, not because it's bad, but because the other movies are just so famous and so important. But I loved this movie when I saw it, and I never forget to include it. I mean, it's a romantic comedy with Ronald Coleman, Gene Arthur, and Cary Grant. What a combination! Coleman plays a stuffy, distinguished legal professor renting a house for the summer from Arthur. But his unexpected arrival a day early causes a huge problem because in the attic, Arthur is hiding Grant, an outspoken prison escapee on trial for arson and murder. Needless to say, chaos quickly ensues. Coleman is definitely playing the older gentleman here, but it doesn't detract at all from his leading man appeal. The humor bounces back and forth between the three leads with much skill and elegance that is rare in today's romantic comedies. Between Coleman and Grant, Jean Arthur has a tough choice to make, and right up to the end, you don't know what exactly she'll do. I focused on the five movies that I like best, now for the rest that I've seen. A Double Life, 1947. This is the performance that Coleman won his Academy Award for, and he certainly worked hard for it, playing an actor who confuses the distinction between fiction and reality during a run as Othello. He plays completely against type, and you'd never know that he really wasn't keen on performing Shakespeare and required coaching and coaxing. The thing is, there are some movies that you see, and you acknowledge that they were good, but you didn't really enjoy them, don't feel like watching them again. Unfortunately, I think that's the case here. Kismet, 1944. I liked Coleman's performance, and loved watching him execute sleight of hand, and I enjoyed the varied costumes and settings, but I don't think I loved the movie. I'd have to see it again. Lucky Partners, 1940. A very light romantic comedy with Ginger Rogers. I don't remember much about the plot. I think it has something to do with a lottery ticket and splitting the winnings. But I do know it has some saucy stuff about adjoining bedrooms and late night telephone calls. The biography had only mediocre things to say about it. And maybe the fact that I can't recall the details so well tells you something. But I do remember that I enjoyed it, and I think I liked it enough that I would like to see it again. Raffles, 1930. Half of Bulldog Drummond, 1929. Here is a younger Coleman being charming, teasing, and heroic as a gentleman detective and as a gentleman jewel thief. The audio quality isn't the best in either of these early sound films, but still, Ronald Coleman. Kiki, 1926. A silent movie with Norma Talmadge that I've seen almost most of. It's a silly story with silly situations, but it's fun. I enjoyed seeing Coleman doing physical comedy, especially in the scene, which I think you can find here on YouTube, where he has to deal with Kiki pretending to be in a catatonic state. You do get the feeling as Kiki's antics go on and on that these two people could never really work as a couple in real life, but movie magic says it doesn't matter. The White Sister, 1923. This is the silent movie that first made Coleman a star. I can see why. For a while, I didn't bother seeing it because I'd read the plot about a girl deciding to become a nun when she receives word that her fiancé has been killed in war, and assumed that Coleman, as the fiancé, only appeared briefly in the beginning. Totally incorrect. We happened to catch this movie on TV partway through, and I was shocked to find he was in it a lot, and he was quite delicious. His desperate attempts to drag Lillian Gish off her moral high ground are intense. Meanwhile, in the background, there's a literal volcano about to erupt. It was all very suspenseful and exciting, and to think I almost missed it. 
Aerosmith, 1931. I just saw this one. Coleman plays a young doctor having trouble finding his way. It depicts his struggles and those of his wife, played by Helen Hayes, as he goes from country doctor and occasional dentist and veterinarian to bacteriologist or something, eventually going to test a new formula on plague victims. This movie was kind of all over the place in terms of storytelling, and there were a few times when the viewer really could have used more information, but Coleman, as usual, was splendid. And that covers all the Ronald Coleman movies I've seen. There are still a lot that I have yet to see, and fortunately some of them are on YouTube. Especially, I would like to see If I Were King from 1938. I've heard some really good things about it, and probably once I've seen it, I will wish that I had seen it before I made this video so that I could include it. Oh well. I hope I've given you enough helpful information and recommendations to make you as eager to watch or re-watch some of these old classics as I am. Enjoy! Happy birthday, Ronnie.